Jack Armstrong. Jack Armstrong. Jack Armstrong. The All-American Boy. Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, bring you the thrilling adventures of Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy. Today, we're saluting a baseball champion, a hard-hitting first baseman who's 32 years old today. Who am I talking about, you ask? Well, I'm referring to Nick Etten of the New York Yankees, a fellow I think you'd like to know. Nick's a quiet sort of a guy, not one to push himself forward. But at the same time, he does a terrific job. In fact, Nick is the only first baseman since Lou Gehrig's day who has held this job with the Yankees for two full seasons. Now, Nick, like so many champions, is a Wheaties eater. And here's what he says about the famous breakfast of champions. When breakfast time comes around, just bring on the milk and the fruit and the Wheaties breakfast of champions, and I'm ready to go. So why not take a tip from Nick Etten? Build your breakfast around big bowls of those flakes of 100% whole wheat with plenty of milk and fruit. Try them, won't you? That General Mills product... Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. And now, Jack Armstrong in the mystery of Devil's Castle. In the laboratory of Devil's Castle, Vic Hardy and Billy are staring at Jack with amazement. For Jack has just told them that he knows who killed the brilliant scientist Dr. Siebel. Many startling things have happened since they found Dr. Siebold's body slumped over his desk in that lonely stone house in the Pennsylvania mountains, the house which a fanatical hermit calls Devil's Castle. First, they found the hidden dictograph, which told how the crime was committed. They discovered that Dr. Siebold had perfected an astounding device to use cosmic rays to unlock the electrical energy of the atom, and that the murderer had stolen half of the device but couldn't find the other half. Jack and Vic found the other half and have it well hidden. But then, Dr. Siebold's body disappeared before the police arrived and was later discovered in the hermit's cave by the lake. Dr. Siebold's lawyer, Mr. Kent, arrived and later Professor Rowers, who offered to help Jack reconstruct the missing half of the atomic device. And then the wild hermit came up with his superstitious mountaineers in a vain effort to destroy the laboratory. But right now, a bit dazed from recent events... Jack and Billy and Vic are alone in the electrical laboratory, and Jack has sprung his great surprise. Jack, did you say I that... said I know who the murderer is, Billy, and he'll be here in just a minute. All right, Jack. Who is he? Professor Rowers. Thank you. Professor, Professor Rowers. Rowers? That's right. And the lawyer, Mr. Candace, is a compass. Oh, I can't believe it, Jack. And here we were talking to him just before the hermit arrived. That's right. I wasn't sure until the hermit did arrive. Then, when Professor Rowers wouldn't stay to meet the hermit, I knew. Are you just guessing, Jack, or do you know? Well, let's call it an educated guess. Please. Well, go ahead, Jack. Tell us how you found out, and quick, before they come down from the tower. You remember, Billy, there was something familiar about Professor Rowers. You noticed it, too. We couldn't quite place it, but, but it was as though we had met him before. Well, that's odd, Jack. I had that queer feeling, too, but I didn't mention it. After all, Professor Rowers telephoned from Pittsburgh the morning after the murder. And I know I never met him before today. You met part of him last night, Billy. Part of him? Yes. His voice. Jack, <gasps> do you mean that his voice is the same voice as the one on that pictograph record? That's right, Vic. It's the same voice we heard talking to Dr. Siebold just before the shot was fired. But, but that voice was smooth and drawn out, Jack. Professor Rowers speaks with short, jerky sentences. And of course, he might be disguising his voice now. Not now, Vic. He disguised it when he killed Dr. Siebold. He'd worked with Dr. Siebold before, years ago. He hadn't planned to kill Dr. Siebold at first. He wore a mask and disguised his voice so Dr. Siebold wouldn't recognize him. Mm, I do recall a slight similarity between the two voices, Jack, as I remember them. But he, he came back and stole the dictograph record, Jack. He's destroyed it by this time. He can never prove it's the same voice. In just a minute, there's something wrong with this picture. He couldn't have come back and stolen that record. We know he was in Pittsburgh about that time. We checked on the telephone call. That's right, Vic. That's where Kent comes into the picture. He stole the record. He came in with the police, remember? He discovered about the record. In fact, he played it back. So he destroyed it after we went to bed. Then he... He was the one who tore up the study looking for the magnetic concentrator. It had to be, Billy. 
That's how I connect him with the case. All right, Jack. Now let's check your theory with the facts as we know them. The body disappeared just before the police came. Rowers could have taken it away. Yes, he took it through the underground coal mine to the hermit's cave. All right, wanting to throw suspicion on the hermit. After that, though, he'd have to get back to Pittsburgh. He had plenty of time to do that. He didn't telephone until early this morning. That's right. Said he saw in the papers about the murder and wanted to help us with Dr. Siebold's invention. Mm -hmm. And it was Mr. Kent who vouched for Rowers. Said he was a good friend of Dr. Siebold's. Well, he used to be. But they parted company years ago. But where does the hermit come in, Jack? Well, that's where I'm guessing, Billy. We know that the hermit is a fanatic, but he's sincere. My guess is that Rowers has planned this thing for years. When he parted company with Dr. Seabold, he knew that the doctor might succeed. He'd lived here with the doctor and somehow discovered the old underground exit to the coal mine in the cave. The hermit's cave? No, Billy, the hermit didn't live in the cave at that time. He showed up here about two years ago. This was a surprise to Rowers, cut off his means of entry. So he had to make friends with the hermit. Told the hermit that Dr. Seabold was trying to destroy the world with an atomic bomb in order to gain his aid. Mm, that could be. And he hoped to throw suspicion on the hermit by taking the body to the cave. That's why he couldn't afford to let the hermit see him in this house. The hermit would know he's a fake. Oh, now I get you, Jack. That's why he made some excuse and left this room when you said you'd bring the hermit in. That was all I needed to make sure, Billy. I believe you are right, Jack, but we haven't a shred of evidence. If the police get hold of Rowers, we'll never find where he's hidden that energizer. And we've got to find it. No use even telling the police, Vic. They'd laugh at us. Rowers is known as a reputable scientist. We've got to keep this to ourselves for a while. You mean we've got to work with those two murderers and pretend that they're our friends? That's and, just and... what I mean, Billy. It'll be a game of wits between us. We're after that energizer, which Rowers has, and he's after that magnetic concentrator that we have. And Jack's right, Billy. It's going to be a dangerous game. But whoever wins will have the complete Cosmotomic Energizer. And if they win, they can't dispose of it in this country. We must retain ownership of this great invention. The United States must benefit from Dr. Siebel's works. Oh, golly, we are playing for big stakes. Jack, I don't understand one thing. Why is the lawyer, Mr. Kent, mixed up in this with Rowers? He's the executor of Dr. Siebel's estate. He could recommend that we give up the concentrator. Right, but then he couldn't use it for himself. He's in cahoots with Rowers, and they've got to get the device without anyone's knowing it. We've got to plan our campaign, Jack. Now, first of all, we've got to find out where Rowers has hidden the Energizer. Correct, and that'll be a tough job. Why, it might be right here in Devil's Castle. Or it might be anywhere in the old coal mine under the house. And he might have taken it to Pittsburgh after he killed Dr. Siebel. Well, we could hunt for it for years. We've got to find it quickly, Billy, or he'll beat us to the punch. I have an idea. I worked it many times as the silence had. I'll arrange to have the police sergeant come in and tell us that his men have found the Energizer. But what good will I get you, Vic? Rowers will find that hard to believe, but he'll be worried just the same. He'll be so worried that he'll lead us to its hiding place. And if he goes to Pittsburgh, we'll know that he took it there. Hold it, hold it. I think I hear Rowers coming down now. I'll go find the sergeant. Tell him what I want him to say. But don't tell him why. I won't. We'll have to dig up some positive evidence before we can accuse Rowers. Jack, I don't know if I can talk naturally to Rowers now that I know he's a murderer. You've got to, Billy. If he suspects that we know about him, it'll ruin everything. And he'll bump us off at the first chance. Oh, here he comes now, Jack. Hello, Professor Rowers. Feel better now? Uh, much better. A wonderful thing, Mountain Air. Hermit gone, I see. Yes, the hermit's gone, but not forgotten. Huh? Uh, how's that? He destroyed the secret drawings. Destroyed the drawings? Can't believe it. Well, he did just the same. He snatched them off this table and threw them into the fireplace. He did it so quickly we couldn't stop him. Terrible. Uh, quite a fanatic, the hermit. So now we can't reconstruct the Energizer. Unless you know enough to build one without the drawing. Oh, difficult. Very difficult. Dr. Seaboard worked for years. Only one thing to do. What's that? Catch the murderer. Catch the murderer and find the Energizer. You're right, Professor Hours. We've certainly got to catch the murderer. Could be the hermit, you know. Yes, it could be. After all, found the body in his cave. Do you think he's the murderer, Professor Rowers? I don't know. Seems likely. Queer sort of fellow. But he wouldn't have stolen the Energizer. Who knows? Wants to destroy it? Suggest we look in cave. You wouldn't want to come with us, would you? Hardly think so. 
matter for police. I say, uh, Mr. Armstrong, or Jack, uh, don't mind my calling you Jack, do you? Oh, no, all my friends call me Jack. Good. Uh, proud to be your friend. I say, Jack, if you'll show me the magnetic concentrator, may help. May get some ideas for the energizer. After all, did work with Siebold, you know, years ago. I'd rather not just now, Professor Rowers. Too dangerous for you. Dangerous? Right. Don't forget the murderer is still around loose. And he may be right here in Devil's Castle. Huh. How's that? He may be hiding here in the house. After all, he seems to know this place like his own home. And he'll kill to get that concentrator. Man, you're much too valuable to the country, Professor. We couldn't possibly risk your life until we catch the murderer. Oh, oh ridiculous. If I'm to help, must insist on seeing Concentrator. I promise you can see it, Professor Rowers, just as soon as we catch the murderer. Uh, can't agree, Jack. Must see it now. Hate to do it, but we'll ask Mr. Kent. The police are taking care of it. By the way, where is Mr. Kent? Oh, uh, roaming around somewhere. Yeah, looking for the Concentrator. Here comes the sergeant now, Professor Rowers. Oh, and here's Vic, too, Jack. Hey, what are you so excited about, Vic? What's up, Vic? You look pleased as punch. We're getting somewhere, Jack. The Energizer has been found. The, the, the Energizer? Found? Why, why, that's wonderful. Boy, that threw the professor for all. Uh, tell us about it, Sergeant. Well, not much to tell. Had my men looking here and other places. One of them found it. But, uh, but I say, uh, he wouldn't know what it looked like. He got a description of it from drawings. Where did they find it? Right where the murderer hid it. And I'm not telling anything more until we pick him up. Then, uh, then you don't know who he is yet. Not yet, but we'll find him. Uh, splendid. I'll be leaving soon now. So, uh, Jack, when you get the energizer, let me know. I can help set it up. But aren't you staying here until we find the murderer, Professor? <laughs> oh, waste of time. Matter for police. Uh, go back to Pittsburgh until you're ready for experiment. Uh, do, do you have to go back to Pittsburgh, Professor? Why don't you wait until we catch the murderer? Uh, sorry. Important matter to attend to. Uh, take Mr. Kent with me. He wants to get back. Settle the estate, you know. But uh, I'll come back soon. Oh, he couldn't wait to get away. Now, looky here, Mr. Hardy. I did what you asked me to. What's it all about? We'll uh, tell you later, Sergeant. It's nothing you can act on now. Well... If it weren't for the reputation you and Mr. Armstrong have... When we can prove who the murderer is, Sergeant, we'll tell you at once. All right. I'm going to the Herbman's cave. I've got some questions to ask that guy. He knows something he won't tell. And we're getting places, Jack. We know that the Energizer is in Pittsburgh. Right. Rowers is going back to check out. We'll follow him in and see where he's hidden it. And I'm going to be armed, Jack. If he finds us in there, he'll know that we're on to him. You're right. He'll have to kill us then. Come on, Billy. Let's get our things. We're going to march right into the lion's den. Right into the lion's den. And you can bet that there's going to be plenty of fireworks in that particular den when Jack and his friends arrive. You won't want to miss it, so listen in, all of you, to the next thrilling episode of The Mystery of Devil's Castle with Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. This is Jim Butterfield, and I'm wondering, are you satisfied with the progress you're making in sports? Are you sold on the game of football or baseball you're playing? Or do you figure with some expert coaching, you could play a heck of a lot better? Well, look, if you want coaching, I'd advise you to find out about the Wheaties Library of Sports. These 16 books are especially written for kids like us. They're full of action pictures and hot coaching tips on almost every major sport. Tips that'll help you play a better game. It's a swell deal, this Wheaties Sports Library. What's more, it ties right in with the Breakfast of Champions idea. That eating right and the right kind of exercise are mighty important in helping you and me grow up strong and healthy. Now, eating right means putting away three good meals a day, starting with a nourishing breakfast. Say one built around big bowls of those whole wheat flakes, Wheaties with lots of milk and fruit. And as for the right kind of exercise, well, you'll read about the Wheaties Library of Sports 
on your orange and blue package of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. Why not check up on the Wheaties Sports Library today? This is Bob McKee and Jim Butterfield speaking for General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, who invite you to listen again tomorrow to another exciting episode of Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.